Nigeria-led government has prioritized infrastructure development as one of its utmost deliverables to the Liberian people. Keen among such infrastructures is affordable housing that is intended to lift people out of poverty, as the Liberia Agency for Community Empowerment list continues to construct proper housing for impoverished community dwellers. The National Housing Authority, the NHA, has been engaging investors to erect housing for the people since the ownership of over 2,000 houses that previous governments built have been transferred to the inhabitants. For the National Housing Authority, previously it has been, um, I think, seven decades. Since its inception, they built only 2,180 houses, all of the assets combined together. So, President, we are sent me here in June of 2019. And in 2019, in six months from June to December, we had signed in to contract 96,000 houses. The commitment of 96,000 houses is at the value 996 million U.S. dollars. That's a pretty good number. The WEAR government has signed into contract 96,000 houses. The first 1,000 of the 96,000 houses is being constructed right now. The company Millennium Construction Incorporated is constructing 100 of the 1,000 houses in the John Court town in Magibi County along the Ravelsfield Highway, while another 100 is being erected at Penn Town in Marsha. And these are middle income housing projects on the way. We are building middle income housing. Reason being is that for you to, for you to uh, build free housing, you must have money. And, and we don't have money, but at the same time, too, um, Liberia, by 2030, Liberia is supposed to uh, build five, uh, 512,000 houses at a build rate of 39,000 houses per year. So we are in, what, 2020. So obviously, how do we do that? We have to um, uh, uh, find land for the investors, and then the investors bring the money, you know, so it's a it's a joint venture. Now, this is the side when 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 we have a policy that if the investors sign with us, they must pay us ten percent. We we'll buy the we we'll give them the land, but the land goes to the buyer of the home, not the investor. You know, so it works for us. The only downside to it is that some of the money or most of the money will go to the investor, whereas if you go to a place like China, you go to Burkina Faso. And the same, this is the same way our model is supposed to be. They have the public corporations diversify their profit into, you know, extending services to the citizens. How do you do that? When before the war we had housing bank, so money went into housing bank. Like quite recently, NHA team up with with, NAS, with NASCO, and NASCO was it was to put in one million dollar, and you know the bill. Um, some houses uh, in Bentown and in only that um, the quality of houses we need now. You know our president being the kind of person he is, you know, he always like, you know, quality. So we're not going to build those same type of houses, but we, we, are, we are trying to construct, you know, quality houses. So if we had, if every year each public corporation were to put 500,000 or even 1 million into that fund and we take it every year, we build, you know, uh, we build, you know, sell maybe one or two you know, housing assets, all the money will come back to government because the citizens will buy from the government, the citizens will rent from the government, like in China. The project is also creating jobs as the workforce was drawn from the local community. Currently, as I speak, both the old folks, the youth, and our women, including myself, we are... Uh, over happy again because we were here doing nothing. Majority of us were surviving on burning coals. So as you can see, the workers in majority, we have something to do on a daily basis. And so it keeps us busy and it curtails the criminal rate a bit. Also, what does this mean for the Joe Coal town along the Rappersfield Highway? Well, uh, 
the fact that a project like this is going on in our area, the first thing it does, it gives a meaning to the area, gives facelift, it uh, improves, eventually it's going to improve the economy of the area, it's going to uh, improve the skyline. New people are going to move in the community, except that the community is a low-income community, uh, to some extent, most likely a non-income any community. So if this comes, it's going to cause the uh, a mix of the people. People who have income are going to move in the area. They're going to move in those new homes. And maybe somebody who is around is going to do some work with some of them. The, the cultural uh, situation is going to improve. Cross-cultural situation is going to improve. Uh, so far, these are some of the things that I see. Because of that, the role may be is going to be done. So the role benefits everybody. <laughs> Walk on the road, who drive easily to come in. Right now, to ask us the road is a little bit tough, especially during the rains. So we're hoping that by the time the estate is done, when they complete it and who moves in is moving in, it's going to be a little development for the area. Reverend Nan also called for the construction of propo housing for the community dwellers. We would like to say thanks to the government for doing that, except that uh, it may not benefit a certain people, quote unquote, propo people who are here, uh, except that they can help us. Considering the nature of the houses, the mortgage has to be paid. Everybody here can pay that mortgage. So if they could uh, revisit the structure of the place, try to move these trash that we get living in here, try to change them to better houses like this, make them smaller, so that people who have low income, somebody's a teacher, most people here are teachers, who live here, they are teachers, they are able to, from their salary, maybe pay a little mortgage of at least, or at most, a twenty-five dollars, thirty dollars a month, and you know. So when these structures are improved like this, then on the whole, it makes everybody will be happy. But in besides, we still have to say thanks because it improves all of us lives. These middle-income housing will provide a shift in the paradigm of the housing sector and clearly projects a new dynamism of having a middle class in Liberia. Property taxes make up a good source of local government revenue for most cities around the world. As the housing has been constructed, there are Liberians mostly in the private sector that have already started the payment of mortgage for said housing, which is an indication that the growth of a vibrant middle class in Liberia is already on the way.